and Prime Motorsport go racing in Bahrain. It's a very good start from Wesley Caspers. Abazi already going under pressure, but John Manning on that medium tyre looking to make progress. And Abazi has had a much better second stage. So John Manning looking to get into second position here. Abazi goes very, very deep on the brakes. It's three wide through two and three. And John Manning comes out on top on that medium tyre. It's absolutely executed perfectly for him. Miron pills up into third position. Wesley Caspers has fallen down into fourth, but Caspers is going to try and fight back at turn four. And he does get along side is there going to be room for both the drivers i think there is and miron pill does fall back into fourth position wesley caspers fighting back do or die at the end of the first sector there going defensive already into the final corner and forge hawkins will try and go the long way around the outside Ooh. we don't normally see overtakes there but he does get it done but i wonder if he won't have drs for it he does have drs yeah marcus has uh, just had a spin at the back i believe there and uh, they're just having a little side-by-side -side battle here, actually, in Sector 2. The Mercedes and the Alpine being very aggressive here. James is looking for more space when there was none. And there's a yellow flag. Looks like Luca has had an incident. And this has all allowed Trappers to actually slide past up into P12. Hugh Hamill defending very aggressively here. He's actually blocking up the rest of the pack now. James T trying to go around the outside of Hamill here and uh, does just about do it, pushes him out onto the curbing. That could be leaving it open to attack from Patrick Kiziel in the Alfa Romeo. As they come to turn four, Hugh Hamill will try to stick it up the inside and keep it there. And this may be an uh, OK defence for him. He's just slightly ahead as it comes to turn five and six, but he decides to back out of it. And Patrick Kiziel uh, is past the Alpine as well. If you don't go forward, you go backwards in motorsport. Yeah, but Mika Luoff is going to take his opportunity up the inside, bashing into the side pod of the Renault powered car and not able to make that move. As you just said, if you can't move forward, you move backwards. As Forge Hawkins takes an opportunity there, going under, going over the top of the apex and he's going to get a better exit here. But they're actually side by side, wheel to wheel, medium versus hard here. Mika Luoff is going to want to retain P16 here. He's uh, just battling very hard for it, taking a quite a lot of curb they're playing it safe as Lucas Paluga and Martin Aldering are actually swapping positions here Paluga going off of the track and moving up into P7 and gaining a little bit of time there uh, Abazi actually running very low on DRS so Wesley Caspers in prime position to go for a move maybe into turn four but I think the gap has grown a bit too much through two and three. Oh, and Marte uh, not he... quite leaving Paluga enough racing room sorry to cut you off and this allows Axel to breeze past them into sector two the Haas just fighting side by side with Marte now he's not going to let him have that one very easily but uh, just has to settle for P8 as Paluga is still fighting him here. The medium tyres may be still a bit stronger than the hards. He's got to make sure he doesn't run into the back of that McLaren there. And uh, he does that successfully. Speaking of people who are getting past Wesley Caspers up into P2. Let's see if he can get better traction. Oh! Out of turn 15. He can't. He, oh, he gets on that curb again. That means he's going to go even further backwards. All of that. And James and Bassi as well. Abazi has spun out of the final corner. So down from third position, he falls all the way down to seventh. And this could be eighth. His teammate fast approaching into turn one. Will he go for a move? The overspeed is still there, but it wasn't quite enough. And he could still be under pressure Ooh. out of two and three. And Speaking of getting ahead, turn one. James Abazi getting past Axel there. A lovely move just with the uh, extra hole in the rear wing. Get a flag. And James T now has an option. And there's a absolutely swaying left left and right and uh, oh, there is contact uh, James T spinning into the Alpine of Hugh Hamill and uh, what do you make of that sideward movement from Lucas Beluga Yikes, and the uh, Chappers just going side to side with James T there as well, James T and Chappers going off of the track, the Mercedes spinning and Chappers having to, to uh, take quite a bit of a sand there of the cars went left this guy, what's this Merc doing? And John Almost Manning and Caspers have switched positions. Sorry, once again, but the Ferrari snatching the lead of the race. He's not going to dive bomb there. He actually lets go of the throttle a bit earlier as John Manning dives into the pit lane. Jakob Hoffer taking quite a bit of track limit there. And James is definitely going to make a pass here. It may not be an easy one, though. It's Aston Martin. Doesn't go defensive. There's another yellow flag. And that looks like the Aston Martin of... Kuliev, but um, Sector 1 there isn't, and Abazi gets past Hoffa. There's a little bit of clashing between the two. Again. Uh, right at the oh! Back. And he actually pit manoeuvres Hugh, 
and shoves him into the wall as Kuliev spins. What a little moment for all those three drivers there. Luca and Marcus Feld, and they'll actually maybe go for a move down into turn 15, 14 and 15. And that will mean he still Whoa. has the RS. Oh, he runs out Luca a bit wide. I don't know if he left racing room now. Luca's going into the pits anyway. So he'll just be frustrated with that one. But John does pick up DRS uh, and picks up the toe. So we'll now chase down Marcus Feld. Yeah, John Manning very close into turn 11, but not going to be close enough. Kitziel will be really frustrating Leerhoff because Leerhoff is on much faster Whoa. mediums. And there's contact between the two. Leerhoff too close to the bottom of Lu uh, Kiziel and that will that's a slam dunk isn't it what a shame. <laughs> we saw something stuff. identical last season as well and Caspers is stuck up behind for another lap this will allow Milan Paul close in very close behind was Caspers there very very close behind just judging <sighs> it and oh right under the gearbox it's really clenchy bum time and looks for a move down into turn oh. 8 there's a little bit of contact it's a bit desperate to make a move like that and I'm not sure how happy Martin will be happy with, uh, with the abruptness of that move. Certainly contact through turn eight between those Ferrari and McLaren drivers. Yeah, and Forgey's actually looking very close here. He could make a move on the Williams here. He's going to duck to the inside and has made a move into turn one. Will it stick, though, as Rafael is chasing him and chasing him out of turn two and turn three? And up towards the second sector, Forge has made that one stick though, and the Ferrari is up to P5. So um, maybe some of the people looking for safety cars will lament that that happened. And hang on a minute, because Forge before. Hawkins is able to get past the Bazzi actually. He's going to hang out on the inside here to McLaren. He's not going to let this one slide. He's worked hard for it, but so has Forge, if not harder. Starting from almost basically the back of the grid, they make lots of contact here. And Bazzi's going to stay up the inside, force Forge wide to the outside line, but Forge is definitely going to get a better exit here. And the Shell branded car, the Scarlet red Ferrari gets up into P4. There's still two laps left though so will Abazi be able to make any moves? Both of them low on ERS but one of them's going to have DRS. Trying to fight back from his own but he also has that penalty anyway so I don't know how hard he'll want to fight and he's actually lifting. I was about I to say maybe have a bit of uh, fuel issues and maybe because we have had no safety cars around here maybe that is uh, going to cost him quite dearly. Uh, I think Forge Hawkins is okay for fuel and looking up the top four, all of them seem to be okay for fuel. It's uh, a Bazzi actually who's in the most danger here and could lose out big here. Yeah, and uh, Rafael was actually catching up to a Bazzi now too. So uh, yeah, maybe James is low on fuel and uh, we saw his teammate Martin not low on fuel and getting past Axel up into P8. For a Bazzi to maintain his position and he's peeling off Ooh. the track and just giving the position because he wants DRS because he wants DRS because he wants to be able to save every single bit of fuel he possibly can the DRS flap of course makes it easier for the car to get to the top revs and use less fuel and he's going to go for a move back on Raphael Martins here and he lifts again because he doesn't want it he doesn't want the place he's already got that penalty and he does not want the place he's just trying to save fuel here it's been a stunning performance very reminiscent of his win at Barcelona last time out he's got the lead of the race and cruised to victory